I think Bruno's going to be coming over here in a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's start with Adam. Yeah, let's start with Adam. Okay. So you want to know what he's like to work with? <laughs> Give me all the dirt. Now we can get the truth. Exactly. Now go ahead, shoot. He'll jump in. Well, okay. Uh, hi. Um, all right, so one thing I've noticed that ha occurs frequently in this show mm -hmm. is the agency of women. They're not damsels in distress. They're actually shaping the men in the show. Um, starting with Esme and now with, with the daughter and with Martha and with Beth. And there's so much agency given to the females in this show. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's applaudable. And I wanted to know if it was a conscious effort that you guys are making when you're putting these clips together. Yes, very conscious. Um, yeah, uh, just what you said. Um, there's, there's a sort of, um, and everyone does it. There's, I guess because Batman is such a macho character. Um, but who is more influential in anyone's life than their mum? Yeah. Um, and and it just made for a more interesting character drama if it was the mum who's the like angry, slightly off the rails loose cannon. Because we've seen, I mean, God knows. Oh, don't get me started. Loose cannon off the rails dad. So it's like, hey, who hasn't got one? Right. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> slightly nutty mum is is more interesting. And I do think you know that's the behind the whole Batman. Canon is like it's slightly nutty. Yeah. You know, he's he's a he's a nut job. Yeah. I also think that's very charismatic and sexy nut job. <laughs> nut job. But I remember that we re that was something we really discovered in the course of Gotham too, like giving more stuff to Aaron, more I mean, more, more stuff to Jade. I mean, all the female characters on that show, I felt like we just understood that so much of that universe lives in, in their storylines and their power. So. Well, that was more that just those were scary people. So That's true, too. Yeah. 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 If you want more lines, yeah. Yeah. you can have screen. more lines. <laughs> Same with Aaron. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the show, Jumping Ahead Five Years, coincides with the move from Epix to HBO Max. Was there a sense of trying to get you know, new viewers a new start, or was it really just the, this is where you saw the story going? Yeah, there was, there was no... Um, we didn't, uh, and nor were we asked to um, switch around anything. Um, they, HBO had seen the first two seasons, liked what they saw, and wanted us to continue mm -hmm. in the same vein. So, to a degree, there was less um, note taking and giving than, than there would be normally um, because they already knew where we were going. And uh, it, it was more of a, a kind of morale boost for, for cast and crew because, you know. One of the big issues now for everyone in the business, uh, which wasn't there before, is just plain visibility. Mm. You know, right. um, it used to be there was three. You know, you knew you would be judged by an audience because the audience had to come to you. Now they can go any bloody way. <laughs> um, uh, so it's important to be on the right platform. Um, it's important to be on a platform of visibility, and obviously HBO is maybe the most. I've only just started calling them platforms, I still call them <laughs> channels. <laughs> what's on the, and in England there was two channels here, what's on the other channel? What's on the other channel? <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, wow. BBC One, BBC Two, uh, and, then, yeah. and then ITV came in. <laughs> I was I, say, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, Kerry, no. You. I'm so sorry, guys. This is a uh, one-minute warning. Okay? Oh, one no. Minute. Sorry. Okay. Right. <laughs> sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. 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 But going off of that question, on the move from FX to HBO Max, you guys are now alongside all of these other Thank wonderful you. DC shows. <laughs> yeah. Where do you guys see yourself fitting in in that group? What sort of DC audience are you appealing to with this show, with this niche? Well, I think the show has far more profanity <laughs> than most of the other shows. I think there's far more blood and guts. I mean, which is the way of saying I think it's actually it's a very adult version of a show that lives inside the DC world and I and not just because of the violence and the profanity but I feel like the show digs into rela the relationships between the characters in very real ways you know so that if were you to strip out all of the DC stuff out of the show I think it plays as a, a drama mm -hmm. so. exactly so I'm so glad you answered that. <laughs> what, what I was going to say, oh, we're the Fredo Corleone of the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're instrumental in the plot, but we don't get no respect. Yeah. <laughs> what was it about the character of Sorry. Alfred that drew you to it as the focus of a TV show? Um, he's uh, partly the fact that he's 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 always there but invisible. Um, and so that's a nice 
Uh, do you, there's a play called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, um, and there's something very fertile about taking a minor character and seeing that world from their point of view. Um, so that was the that was the genesis of it. And then you know Michael Caine very nicely um, made him an SAS guy. So you know what's better than that? Sorry guys. <laughs>